Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to load Clipper on your EasyBoard V2. What the hell's going on here? Let's get to it. So since Clipper is so popular and you guys keep asking us about it, I've decided to put together a video on how to install Clipper on your EasyBoard V2. Now, one thing I want to mention before we get into this is when most people say Clipper, they're actually talking about a stack of software that all works together to give you a interface for your 3D printer, whether that's through a web browser and or through a touchscreen interface. This guide is assuming you already have either an SPC or a computer running Linux that you have Clipper installed on, Moonraker, which is the API, and one of the front end interfaces. Those front end interfaces could be Octoprint, they could be Fluid or Mainsail. If you're using a touch screen, which a lot of people are, you could also be using Clipper screen. But we're not covering any setup other than the board firmware in this video. So for my SBC, I actually have our EasyPi R4 Plus kit that I've reflashed the SD card with a base Armbian Buster installation. I've used the Clipper installation and update helper script, which is linked in the video description to get Clipper installed along with the Moonraker API and the Fluid interface. So the first thing we're going to want to do is SSH into our computer that is running Clipper. In my case, it's my EasyPi R4 Plus kit that I've reinstalled Armbian on. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I've already gone ahead, like I said, and installed the Clipper installation and update helper. So all I need to do now is run that. I'm going to go ahead and run the installation update helper command and we're going to want to go to advanced. So number four, I'm going to do build only. And now we're going to need to set the options for the EasyBoard V2. In this case, we want to make sure this enable low level configuration options is selected. Our microcontroller architecture is going to be the STM32. The processor is gonna be the STM32 F405. The bootloader offset is the 48 KIB bootloader. And we want to set the clock reference to the 12 megahertz crystal. Now just double check that your communication interface is set to USB on PA 11 slash 12. And we're gonna go ahead and hit Q and then Y. So now it's building the firmware. We're gonna need to run one more command before we grab the firmware file off of the actual SPC. Once we run the command, we'll go ahead and copy it to the SD card and then we're ready to flash our board. So you can see here, it says, okay, firmware built. I'm gonna hit B and then Q. So now we're gonna need to switch into the Clipper out directory. So type CD period forward slash Clipper forward slash out and hit enter. And we're going to need to run a command that is in our example config. I'm gonna paste it in here. This is command is gonna be arm dash none dash E A B I dash O B J copy dash capital O S rec clipper dot E L F firmware dot bin. I'm gonna hit enter. And just like that, the file's ready. Now to actually get the file off of my SPC, I'm going to need to load win SCP. And I'm gonna go ahead and type in the SPC information and hit login. Go ahead and tell it you want to trust this. And now we're going to go into the clipper and then out folder. And you can see here we have the firmware.bin. So I'm gonna take my SD card and put it into my SD reader. I'm going to take the firmware.bin file and drag it over to my SD card. And now you can see the firmware.bin is on my SD card. I'm gonna take this out of my computer And now we're gonna put it into our control board with the power off. I just have this set up on the bench here so I can show you guys different options as we play with the clipper settings. So I'm gonna put this in, give the board power, and just give it about 30 seconds and it will flash the firmware. Now by default, you're not gonna see anything on the screen. So now we need to go back to our home directory. We can do CD, little wiggly sign, and then load the KIAUH script again. And we need to get the USB ID of our board. And this will be different for every single board. To get that, hit four for advanced, and then hit five for get MCU ID, one for USB, 
and we can see here now we have the ID. So we're going to want to copy this USB clipper ID here. And we're going to want to go ahead and put this in our printer config file. So now to actually get everything talking, we need to go to configuration here, go to printer CFG, and I'm going to paste that USB ID here just for reference. And then I'm going to copy the example config we have in our GitHub for our EasyBoard V2 into here. And scroll back up and we now want to cut this. And we're going to replace the placeholder one we have here. Now at this point I hit save and restart. And now it's going to connect to the control board. So right now we have Clipper set up on our EasyBoard V2 and we have a very basic config. There's no LCD set up, there's no filament sensor or anything. So I'm just going to go through the options we have that are commented out that we tried to put in here to make it easier for you guys to get set up and running with our board with Clipper. So if I go back in the printer config file and we scroll down, you'll see there's a bunch of options that are commented out. Some of these options we have that are commented out are, are for like a BL touch with the control pins here and the sensor pin, filament sensor options, our NeoPixels here, and then the LCD. Now, if we switch over to my actual board here, you can see I have fans connected to the fan outputs. This is connected to my layer fan. This is connected to my controller fan. So these fans will come on when a motor or a heater's on and shut off automatically. Our Easy Neo 220 strip is connected to the NeoPixel header on our board right here. And you can see here, the LCD has nothing on it. So I'm gonna switch back over to my screen here. I'm going to uncomment the display lines. All of these lines here need to get uncommented. And then I'm gonna hit save and restart. But before that, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna hit that and I'm gonna switch over to the camera. And you can see here, now we have our 12864 screen on the board and everything works on there. Now, if I want to get my lights working. I can go here and uncomment the NeoPixel options again uncomment all of these. And we're going to hit save and restart. And we should see those turn on in a sec once the firmware reloads. There we go. And now we have our NeoPixels working. If I go ahead and try to home the X motor, I only have one motor connected right now. We should see the fans kick on for a second here. There they go, and they'll shut off. It's going to complain about not being able to home because obviously this isn't in a printer. I'm going to go ahead and turn the part fan on. You can see here, fan is spinning. And just like that, we got a basic config here. I hope this gives you guys a little bit of a head start getting Clipper running with your EasyBoard V2. This video, like I said, is focusing on just getting Clipper on your actual EasyBoard V2 and getting it communicating with the actual interfaces that we talked about. Hope this video helps you guys get Clipper running on your EasyBoard V2. We'll be doing other Clipper content on this channel. As always, happy printing.